Hello, I'm Mateo Bendeski and I'm the director of Los Miembros de la Familia or Family Members. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film. ¿Qué hago? Trata de relajarte y mantener los órganos mirando al cielo. <coughs> Cerra los ojos. ¿Puedo hablar? Sí, pero tenés que quedarte quieto hasta que te diga. Mientras te voy a ir apretando los centros magnéticos para que se activen. Dale. Para vos, ¿el paro tiene que ver con nuestra energía? No. Pero si estamos desarmonizados, influye en que no se resuelva. Todo tiene que ver con todo. ¿Y el sindicato? Se mueve mucha energía ahí. Igual es justo lo que reclaman. ¿Sabes que hay gente que piensa que el universo en realidad es un programa de computadora? Con más razón. Todo es energía. Esta casa tiene una energía horrible. ¿Y sí? ¿Qué te pensas? No, pero antes también. No sé por qué a mamá le gustaba venir acá. Hello and welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Hannah Congdon and I'm here with director Matteo Bendeschi to talk about his film Los Miembros de la Familia. Hi and welcome to the Bellinale. Uh, hello, thank you very much. Yeah, how are you finding it so far? Oh, very nice, very, very yeah. nice. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Um, and so to, to talk about the film, um, I think a few of your films have dealt with the kind of the genre of magical realism. Um, this one included, and I wondered what drew you to that particular genre. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I'm very interested uh, personally in magical, in magical yes. realism. I think it's, it's a beautiful genre and a beautiful way of telling some of the stories I'm interested in. But also in this particular film, I feel that uh, the moment in life where characters are, uh, teenage years, and specifically, Teenage years, when there is a grieving moment, like the, uh, I feel that reality and the, 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 the magical world get a bit a bit mixed up. So the boundary between what's real and what's not gets a bit diluted. And I felt that for this particular story, that would that that, that worked very much. And I don't know, I I, I really wanted to tell it that way. So. And um, the th grief is obviously a big theme of the film. Is that yes. something that you based on your own experiences at all? Yes, it, there's many of the elements in the film are autobiographical, but uh, many are not, of course. Uh, I feel like even w whatever this film would have been about, it would have been a bit autobiographical. But in this particular case, yeah, there there are some uh, personal elements in the film. More so than in other films you've done. Uh, I feel that in retrospective, if, if, if you watch any of my previous films, you're going to see many things of myself in them. I, 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 I try to put as much of, I, I, I wouldn't say my personal experience, which some of them do, mm. but of myself in general. Like, not, like some, some are experiences, some are uh, feelings I have, some are things that happen, that literally happen to me in the same way. Uh, so it's a mixture, but yeah. They're, they're, there, there is a lot of me in the in, in, in the film. Yeah, and I found the setting quite interesting. So it takes place in this slightly mysterious coastal town in Argentina, um, and visually it's amazing as well. Everything seems to be kind of crumbling and falling apart. Um, and I wondered why that setting, and how did you find the locations as well? Is it all set in the same place? No, it's 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 uh, we invented that town. It's actually seven different places. Uh, or six or seven different different towns. I had this idea in mind. I wanted. Uh, I had this uh, archetypical place of uh, places of the Argentinian coast, like the the pier and the fitness plaza, and and then we started scouting. It was a very long scouting because I had uh, a very particular ideas of what I wanted in mind. And when we found it, we decided it was best to just create a, like, invent a new town. 
And the Argentinian uh, Atlantic coast has this very melancholic thing to it, uh, the, the crumbling thing you say, uh, that for me was very, very interesting. It's, uh, it's a very particular sub-world. It's a, a, very, a, a thing that represents very well the Argentinian middle class. It's a vacation place for Argentinian middle class. And for me, uh, it's, a, it, it's a very magical place. Uh, it's, it's, a, a, a bit, it's melancholic, but at the same time, it's very special. It's very different. I don't know. It, it has like these thing, and especially in winter when it's empty. It's I don't know. I, I like I like it very much. Yeah, it's funny because you talk about it being like a magical holiday town, but that makes me think of kind of sunsets and yes. and really beautiful scenery. But it's it's not that. So why why, why did all. you choose to do winter? Because I well, first of all, I I, I, I love the. Argentinian coast in winter, it's completely empty. I mean, it, it looks it, it looks and it feels like a deserted town. Because almost no people live there. Uh, it's a, these are very small towns that are prepared to receive many, many tourists during the summertime. And in wintertime, they're empty. And you can feel that this idea of a place that is meant for something else. And I like that setting for the film. It's like, I felt that it made the characters feel even more out of their place in the world. Like, okay, not even, not even the setting is receiving us. So everything was, I wanted everything to be very, like, hostile, but quote unquote hostile for them. Uh, and I felt that the, the Argentine coast uh, in the winter was, was a great setting for that. Mm. And also it looks amazing. So that's, that was yeah. also something that, that I was very interested in. And the style of conversation is this very deadpan, almost overly, like exaggeratedly serious tone. <laughs> and I wondered why you chose to use that style. Be well, I think uh, I, 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 you mean that for the like for the comedic parts or for. Um, I think, com I, personally, this is a very personal thing, but I. I I think comedy works better when everybody's serious. Uh, it, it, I, I like that kind of comedy. I, I like the way they say things, and I, I, I love exploring that way of acting with, with the actors. So uh, for me, it's something that I've been working, like this tone is something I've been working with for all my previous films, and this one included. And there's something in the tradition of the absurd and the dry comedy that I, I, I really like, and I, I feel it works very well with the kind of comedy. Very, like, again, it's a very dry, Dra dramatic comedy, uh, but it, it it worked for what I wanted to do. Yeah, and how did you get the actors to work with that? Because they're often saying things that are very absurd, but they're having to keep this completely straight face and very sort of monotonous tone. Yeah. How did you get them to, to cope with that? We had to rehearse a lot. We rehearsed for three months before. Uh, it was a very intense rehearsing before the shooting, but also because uh, we had to have the main actor uh, train. He, was, he, he did a very intense uh, physical training to be in shape for the film. So we, we mixed that with a, a lot of rehearsing. It was very specific, very particular. Uh, at some points, it was, I don't know, we, we, we worked a lot over the tone and over the way I wanted them to, to say some things and the cadence I wanted to, the, some of the dialogues to have, because for me, at some point, uh, it has a, 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 like this idea of this very dead pantone has a very musical idea to it for me. So it, it has to be very precise. So it, it, it needed a lot of rehearsal. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And phones and the internet play quite a big role for Lucas kind of discovering his own sexuality and communicating with other people and, and I suppose keeping an element of his sexuality secret. Um, and I wondered what role you see technology and phones especially playing in queer culture for younger people. I feel that nowadays uh, the internet in general, but the phones in particular, are the, the, almost the setting where people live. I mean, life is, has a, there's a certain duplicity in our life, that we live in the real world, but we also have like a, a second life that sounds very old. Second, like saying second life sounds, brings me back to like 15 years ago. Uh, but we have a, a, like a parallel life on, on our phones. Uh, and I don't, I don't mean that like uh, as an analysis on like, oh, we live on the internet, but like quite literally, we, we, we date 
via internet. We meet people via internet. And for teenagers especially, and I, I, I think of myself as a teenager, like for, for shy teenagers especially, uh, the internet and uh, these very impersonal but also very special way of communicating, very, which brings a, a special kind of closeness, uh, it's an amazing tool for getting closer to other people. So it's, it's almost like a paradox because these completely impersonal and completely technological way of communicating is, an, for me at least, uh, is an amazing tool of getting closer to people in ways someone wouldn't have been able to do it uh, in the past if you were shy or if you were, I don't know. So I think it's... it's uh, it reflects very much the way that young people or younger people uh, live nowadays and communicate nowadays. And I, 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 I mean, I, I saw that also in between shots, like when we were shooting, on the way the actors lived. I mean, the way they, 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 they live their life. I, I feel like I'm 75 years old when I'm saying this. <laughs> like, this young people. Uh, but I, I felt it very much. I mean, uh, it's as if part of, the, uh, of our lives nowadays happen online. And I don't mean it only as a way of communicating, but uh, actually as a place we inhabit. So I don't know if that replied to the question. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of conversation throughout the film uh, about, oh, you know, are we really experiencing this life or are we actually living sort of a hallucination or a parallel? And it, was, was that linked to maybe a critical um, idea of the technology leading us into a, as a virtual life that doesn't actually provide any authenticity? Uh, I, 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 I'm not against that. I don't know. I, I didn't think of it as a as a way of criticizing that, but more as a, uh, as a way of having the characters think about their own existence. It's, it's, I, I, I think it's, it, it works more uh, around the idea of questioning your, like, our own place in the universe. Like, okay, so what is this? And we have different ways of seeing this. I mean, Gilda has a very spiritual uh, way, like this quest for meaning goes, uh, more uh, around a, a spiritual search. Uh, Lucas is extremely focused on fitness and, and, and bodybuilding, etc. And I like the idea of having this very, like this character who is Guido, who is very focused on his own body too. He's, a, he, he's another like fitness guy. But I wanted, I, I like this idea of him bringing these very philosophical questions to the table. Like, okay, so what if, this is all a simulation, and that is actually a, 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 a. There is a whole theory around that, like we are living in a computer simulated universe, and I find that so interesting and so fascinating that I, I, I wanted the characters to talk about that. So, in some way, I, I feel that the film uh, touches these, like the, the, the subject of building your own meaning, building the meaning you need for the universe we have. So it's, I, I think it's more like that than a, than a criticism of, of like the internet and phones, which I absolutely love. I'm, I'm, fa I'm fascinated <laughs> by uh, everything that's all, like internet for me is like, I don't know, yeah. quote unquote, don't quote me on that. <laughs> that's all right. Um, and some of the funniest bits of the film are when the, um, Lucas and uh, what's the older guys? Uh, Guido. Guido. Um, when they're having these very deadpan conversations, very serious conversations about sport, um, and they become almost quite homoerotic as well because it's all to do with these videos and it's very touchy feely. And then they start talking about steroids. W were you satirizing the homoeroticism of sport in any way? Yeah, uh, I mean, you, yeah, you could say that. I mean, my. Yes, th there's a lot of. I feel that, especially in in Argentina, that is a very a, a very conservative country in many in many ways. Uh, the the sports world is very very uh, very closed on, on itself and very yeah. Uh, uh, as you said, it's it's very I don't know very particular. So I I, I wanted to satirize. Yes, I, I, there's a bit of a satire on that and this idea of I don't know. Like the, the, 
the macho thing of sports and how, like, especially in Argentina where it is very uh, cultivated, uh, I feel it's so absurd that I, 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 I wanted to, yeah, to, I don't know, yeah, sat satirize is the word yeah. on that. I mean, it's, it, that is a criticism. That, like, that, like, this idea, because I wanted this character to be very focused on fitness, but not have any of these conservative, macho, like, very, uh, I don't know, old, I, I, I don't know, like, very, I, I can't find the word in English, like, uh, very, yeah, I mean, conservative, so, but, I don't know. And I mean, I suppose on a more political note, is is that a, is it a problem in Argentina the acceptance of homosexuality or, or transgender well, characters? Nowadays, I, I I mean, I think it's hard everywhere. But Argentina has very progressive laws regarding that. Uh, it's 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 quite complicated because the the Argentine law is very progressive regarding that, but the Argentine people are still very conservative. So uh, Argentina still has a lot of road to go in that sense. But at the same time, it's one of the, country, the, the most progressive countries in the region in that sense. Right now, it's not a, I mean, it's, it's a very complicated time for, for, those, for that sense. But I don't know. I, I, it's, it still is much better than other places. So it's, I don't know. And throughout the film, there's quite a lot of conversations about well, there's a drug taking, yeah. sort of recreational drug taking. And then there's also quite a lot of talk about taking steroids and taking supplements. I wondered if you were trying to make a comment in any way about, especially young people's desire to constantly take on supplements or sort of add something to their lives. I feel I, I, I didn't feel that much as a comment, but more it was. The w I mean, it was more a portrait of how I see it is nowadays. I mean, uh, well, synthetic drugs, I mean, they take cocaine and MDMA and uh, any kind of drugs are very, very present in, uh, in, in, in our lives today. So I, I felt that it was, it, it was the only way to be accurate about this portrait. I feel like portraying young people, like 17-year-olds, and not showing them in their contact with their drug world. I'm trying to be... To, I'm trying to pose this in, in, a, in a way I, I'm not saying anything like very... Uh, but not showing the way they're in contact with that world would be inaccurate. Or at least how, how I feel it is and how... Uh, uh, I don't know, how I, my surrounding world is. Mm. And even though a lot of the film does have this underlying humour, the, it's very poignant at moments, I thought, especially the relationship between Lucas and his sister. Yes. Um, and there are quite a lot of open conversations about issues of mental health and depression. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, I, I wondered if you could elaborate a little bit more on why you wanted to include that. Uh, well, it's, I, I feel like it, it, it's very much the same as with the track things. I feel that those are issues that are part of our lives today and not including that would be very hypocritical but also I thought oh, sorry about very, so also I thought it was very important to show that because I feel that these are issues that are very present in teenage lives today I mean uh, I don't know these are kids that are going through a grieving process that went through a lot of things and the way it appears I don't want to spoil the film but it appears at a point where they allow themselves to talk about that and that is the moment when they are they, they really said that they, they set themselves free in some way so they 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 it's as if at that point in the film when they are they, they allow themselves to talk about that and they 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 get to that point when they uh have that com those conversations uh it's the moment when they let go of all of, of this burden they're carrying so i i, I feel that from then on is that the characters are uh, allow themselves to to or are liberated from this this this, like, this burden. Mm. And I wondered what inspired Gilda's character, especially because she's quite quite hard to work out, especially at the beginning of the film. She's quite cold, but a, a lot of times. But then you have these moments of real warmth and vulnerability. I wondered if there was any inspiration behind that character. Uh, well, it's a mixture of things. So there there, there were many inspirations. Uh, I wanted her to be uh, this very hermetic character, but because 
I, I'm very interested in how complex feelings work. Uh, speaking, uh, I'm, I'm especially fascinated by psychoanalysis, which is huge in Argentina. Uh, and I like this idea of feelings being one thing, but it being expressed as something else. So I wanted this character to be, uh, to feel very guilty and also very, uh, I don't know, very confused about the, 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 what, what, what she was going through and have the guilt be expressed in a way that she becomes very hermetic towards her brother. Uh, um, why guilty exactly? Where because does that guilt come from? I, I felt, I, I, it, it's hard speaking about uh, ca my characters, but I felt that she knows that her brother is, is, is hungry at her for having left, but she knows she didn't leave intentionally. But it's, it, it's a very, I mean, it's a very, um, complicated mixture of things so it's uh, I think that sometimes we feel we, we don't choose what we feel and I like that idea of her like being well I, I think I'm going to spoil the whole film but having been absent for a long amount of time and that not being her responsibility but also being feeling guilty for that and all of that expressing itself in a, in a way that it, it, it uh, Makes makes her very hermetic towards her brother, and makes her very uh, almost angry. And I don't know. I, I wanted it to be a, a, a big mess of feelings. And I, I don't know. I love that character very much. I I, I feel that the way she expresses all of this uh, shows how vulnerable, but also how tender she is. Because in the end, she's a, I don't know. She's also a very confused young girl, mm. try, stri trying her best or striving to find some, not only some meaning in the world, but also uh, some meaning who she is or who she, what she wants. Yeah. Um, do you think that's reflected in the fact that she ends up with an older man? Is that <laughs> that's, no. yeah, uh, I hope nobody sees the, uh, the, I, the interview. The inter after oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, I feel that I wanted that relationship because there's a lot of mystery around that relationship during the whole film. The, uh, the, uh, Luke has a... Uh, suspects that he doesn't exist so he has this idea okay so who is this guy why do you why you, do you never have a picture of him why are you, why do you keep it hidden keep him keep, keep him hidden and i i like this idea of having this relationship that could be like it's like at the moment when he appears it's like it's a bit comedic comedic but it, it, it's a bit weird also but i i really like the idea of her being completely uh, not just judgmental of her own relationship. She's like, yeah, what, so what? So I, I, I thought that made the character and her own story very, it, it was very empowering for the character. And I wanted it to be very uh, easygoing for her. So uh, for me, th that was the idea. Like, so yeah, I do whatever I want and I, I don't feel any, I, uh, I don't feel bad for it. I'm, I, I, I thought it was an empowering gesture for, for, for Gilda to have this much older boyfriend. I was going to say very old, but I, I know that it's, it would be like uh, showing off our... Yeah. <laughs> our, our um, but no, but having these relationship with a much older man and not caring about what other people can say about so I, I feel the film is a lot about that the film is a lot about uh, embracing whatever you like and whatever you whoever you are and love love that in a or, or embrace that in a loving way mm. so I, I felt that that was that that was the idea with that gesture yeah. And I'm sure you're intentionally keeping it mysterious in the film, but can you give us a, a bit of an idea about what the actual past is of um, the family and, and what's happened oh, to okay, the yeah, I mean, Or do you want to keep that secret? Oh, no. I, I mean, I feel like I, I like people to interpret what they see in the film. I, I, my idea, I can tell you my, what I think, mm. but that's not necessarily what is, what is in the film. I mean, I, 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 I'm the filmmaker, but then the film has a life of itself, so people can interpret what they want. I, I think that I, uh, Gilda clearly spent some time at a rehab center. She says, I don't do drugs anymore. Uh, I, I, I had this like whatever situation and I had to sp spend some time at a clinic. Uh, I think I, the mother killed herself. That's, I mean, that, that's the main idea and that's why they're, uh, they're very, uh, they don't want to go to the bathroom because I feel that that's a that space, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So I think I think people don't don't have to see the film anymore now. <laughs> yeah, just skip that and watch <laughs> yeah, the interview. Uh, but I then I, I I like people being able to interpret what they want. I feel that leaving that space open is where the, the film becomes complete when the audience uh, can put whatever whatever they want or whatever they feel the film transmits to them into the film and I feel that is where the film becomes alive so I, I intentionally leave those spaces open mm. thank you so much for talking to us it was, oh. yeah really interesting and I hope you have a really nice rest of the time at the Berlinale oh thank you very much thank you for this interview and thank you for having me here